Hello couples, coming to you live with the question and answer the Q&A portion. Hello. Hey yo, can I hop in with you? Sure, come on in. Oh, thank you. I'd like to have this conversation as well. So one of the things that we're really loving about social media, it's great for posts, it's great for videos, but what is it best for? For us, it's about conversation. And yes, you get in conversations from posting and making comments. But what about live? And that's what we want to do. We want to actually get in here with couples, get into the relationship, get into the experience. And let's do this together. Let's do this live. And that's what our question and answer sessions are all about. Relationship topics. Like today, we're going to be talking about business ideas that couples have started, practicing the law of attraction and manifesting together, and balancing romance and business. Come on! I like those three topics. I was so excited to get these questions because these are some of my favorite topics. Seriously, right? Love these. All right, do you want to start here with business ideas that couples have started together? Well, and as we get into this, make comments. We got our devices, we got computers, we got iPads, we got phones. We want to hear from everyone. We want to start to answer some of these questions live. Let's get into this together. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, as a couple, what can we do? What can we start to create as a business, as an income for the freedom, for the travel, for the experience, for whatever money is going to bring for you? What are some ideas? Well, a number of, number of couples that we have coached and just been aligned with have started things like adventure retreats. I want to talk about the retreat thing here really quick because this is awesome. You know, so many times we're thinking about what new job can I create or how can I create a consulting business so that I can kind of go back to the being paid per hour model. But the retreat thing is so fun because this couple, one in particular, wanted to travel, right? They wanted to have the kind of life where they could go to India for a month and then go to Europe and travel around. They, they really wanted to live that life. So they were trying to brainstorm and something they're really passionate about is hosting people and leading people through workshops and transformation. So they're blending those together and it's absolutely amazing to see that. Some other ideas might be starting a winery together. Uh, you might have to move to Northern California or you could do it here. We know a, co a couple that has started a winery here. They grow their grapes a little bit up north. Or how about a digital marketing agency? Or how about a coaching business? Mm -hmm. And that coaching could be around health and wellness. It could be around writing. It could be around publishing. It could be around your mindset. It, it could be really anything. And I think the point here that we want to drive home is it's about your zone of genius. It's about not just coming up with something that's going to replace a job, have you do the same amount of hours and, and just trade one job for another job, but it's about having something that you're passionate about, something that you're really good at, a zone of genius, and something that you really feel purpose-driven in doing. Yeah, I think it's really exciting to sit down together and brainstorm. And a lot of times, you know, we've said this, I think, in another Q&A as well, but we can't hit it home enough. So many times people will create the business first before saying, what do we want life to look like? And what you want life to look like might actually change what kind of a business you start. So for example, if you're thinking, well, let's start a coffee shop because oh, a you know, you love coffee and you want to start a business. You don't want to be employed anymore by someone else. But if you don't check in, okay, what's that going to have life look like in the beginning, to be honest, unless you're a pro at outsourcing and creating a team, it'll look like you being in the shop a good majority of time, right? I know a few people who've started restaurants, cafes, and the first year, two, three years, they're in that shop a lot, okay? And they say it limits their travel. Here's the thing, if your vision is that coffee shop, you wanna be there, you want community, you wanna have, you wanna have events there, like that excites you to be there, then go all in. But check in, because if you sit down before you create that coffee shop or restaurant, and you check in that actually, if you didn't get to travel every other month, you would be in panic. Then you got to reevaluate. Maybe it's something else. Could you take that concept of trout or of coffee and being passionate about that and create somehow a traveling coffee van, oh. right? Oh. Like how can you blend the concept of what kind of business you're passionate about and what you want life to look like? I just made that up traveling yeah. coffee shop. That someone's got to take that and run with well, that. Well, have some write some comments. We want to hear from you. What are some of the ideas that you've been thinking about as 
crazy it may, as it may seem, the point is there's probably going to be something that you're called to, probably something that you feel like you're really good at, you're drawn to, and you might say to yourself, well, you know, Jocelyn, I just don't see any example of it out there. Great. That's because it came to you. It came to you to create that. Just because it doesn't exist doesn't mean you shouldn't continue. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the one to be called forth. Hey, iPhone didn't exist at some point. Mm -hmm. and Wait, it didn't? I thought there was um, always an we're, iPhone. We're throwing something. Maybe you didn't know that. I'm sorry if that scared you. Yes, iPhones have not always existed. But uh, Steve Jobs, he had, whoever it was that really had the idea, Someone had to have the idea of this phone in your hand, obviously it's developed, but mm -hmm. also don't let that stop you. Mm -hmm. uh, take the first step. You don't have to see the whole path, right, Jocelyn? I mean, right. did you see the whole path Absolutely. from the time starting and, and retiring your job? Woo, I know. I did not see what we have now at the beginning. <laughs> Absolutely not. But really creating that vision and what we wanted life to look like and starting the business. It's been absolutely so much fun. And don't let the rumors that you couldn't do business with your partner get in your head. You can absolutely do that. Well, keep writing comments. We're looking over here to field any questions you have. We want to get into conversation. As that leads us into the second point is really law of attraction. Now, you may have heard this term a lot. And for us, it's really more about manifestation. For us, it's about manifesting, taking something non-physical, one of your desires, like having a business and how do you actually have that take form how do you take that have it matter how do you bring it into matter into the physical world for you to experience and that is the first place you start about what is your zone of genius now we start on this path of intention and alignment so you want to lead us through what is this if i was going to start my day i have this idea about a business something i want to try out with uh, my partner the first step of manifestation is intention and alignment. What is that? Well, and I want to answer this first by saying what it's not. And a lot of people think they're manifesting when they're really hustling. They're like, I'm manifesting this, but they're actually overcompensating and getting to a stressed state. So I just want to first say what it's not, okay? But the intention and alignment, as you were just asking what that is, is really clarifying your desire, how you desire to feel right and how you desire to feel and how that might look for you so when you set that intention it's also about being unattached to exactly what it looks like or when it comes and actually it comes in really exciting surprising ways and oftentimes when it gets attracted into your life sometimes you can be like no, it can't be this easy. And I want to give you a quick example, actually. A couple weeks ago, I was really envisioning and intending that someone was going to come into our life who would want to learn some of the behind the scenes of our business and offer to do some of our online making videos, writing, doing some of the things that for us are powerful to learn but repetitious for us. So I just put that out there. I'm not strangling it. I got to manifest this. I'm not now searching a ton and posting a ton about it. I'm putting that out there. I'm setting the intention and I'm visualizing how it will feel. And today, no joke, get a voice message on Facebook. Hey, I really want to learn some of the behind the scenes of your business. I, I need to learn this, this, and this for my business. Can I do an apprenticeship? I'll work X number of hours for you each week. And I'm going, what? How? The, and I literally almost was like, no, it can't be this easy. And then I remember like, this is what manifesting really is, is launching a rocket of something you desire, right? And, and that's what you intend to feel and create. And for me, there's this sense of just releasing it and being delighted by watching it unfold. So that's where you may want to start in the morning mm -hmm. is hold that desire, feel it as if it already is. And now how to actually take that into form, how someone reaches out to you like, like they did for Jocelyn and say, calling forth, is there something I can help, I can do to help you with? Like literally she called that forth. Well, it doesn't just happen. That comes from the second piece of manifesting. That's staying in alignment. And alignment has to do with two things, your state and then also the actions that are directly correlated to the state you find yourself in. So what does this really mean? Your internal state or your way of being, you know, how you show up. You can show up in life as calm, as peaceful, as angry, as determined, as forceful, as joyous, 
as in flow, right? So those are all different ways of being and that correlate to an internal state. I mean, you can feel that difference of when you're in a peaceful state and a calm state and an excited and a joyful and a motivated and a fired up state. Well, that state is a vibration. I mean, it just is. That's an energy vibration that all matter is made up of. So we want to stay in alignment. We want to follow that path of how that feels. How does that intention feel to you? And as you go out in your day, you stay in alignment with the opportunities, the people, the resources that come your way. They're going to ask you to do a lot of different things. A lot of opportunities are going to come your way for you to take action on. But we can't just take any old action. Mm -hmm. And we can't just take action hustle. We can't just take action for the sake of action. It's about staying in alignment with your desire, what you intend, and that's your state. And that state will lead you to the effective actions for people to just reach out to you seemingly out of nowhere and say, how can I be of service? So I have a question, Aaron, to put this into practice, right? So here are these couples, they're clarifying what they desire, what they want to attract into their life. And so they set that intention. Okay. So that's where you're at. And how can people tell, so let's say they're presented with an opportunity and it may or may not be the match for that intention, what you're desiring to attract. How can you check in? So you say pause and then what do you focus on or how do you tell by your feeling? It's going to be an answer that only you can answer, really. And that's about checking out that experience. You know, you set out, you probably created a vision statement if you've been following anything that we've been doing. And your vision statement may have or will have experiences attached to it, right? The main thing is what you want to experience in life. And so for Jocelyn, it's massive contribution, financial freedom, and joy. And so you follow that feeling. You follow that experience. So if someone comes across your path with an opportunity or they want to join with you, first of all, does that seem in that moment to lead to joy? Do you feel joy in partnering with them? Do you feel massive contribution in the path they're asking you to go down? Do you, and it's a feeling. You have to, it's, it's an intuition. You have to follow that. And maybe you're not quite used to following intuition or mm -hmm. following your, your inner guidance as far as a feeling or experience. So you may just pause and say, oh man, thank you so much for that opportunity. Let me get back to you. So oh, that's good. I just got to underscore that. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's, we got to underline that because you said, let me get back to you. Where I think what I even just got for myself was I lived so much of my life. Like I need to give an answer now. And it's either I'll jump to a no or a yes. And then sometimes I'd regret the no or I'd regret the yes. So that's just powerful to be able to say, let me check. Let me take some time to see what's in alignment. That's great. One more That's good. thing I'll throw out there, and I actually had this conversation earlier today. If it's not a particular conversation with someone where they're asking you to be a yes or a no now, it's, a, it's an opportunity that you could say yes or no to. If you just leave it go, and I've, we've actually found this a number of times, and it comes back around, if the opportunity comes back again, that's been a way for us that we've been allowing the alignment to reveal itself mm -hmm. is by, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I checked in on my experience. I, I think it could go either way. I paused and I still am not exactly clear. I'm, I'm not sure about the feeling moving forward. Mm -hmm. We'll release it like Jocelyn said in the beginning. And if it comes back, mm -hmm. probably a signal. If it comes back a third time for us, we're finding that's almost the validation that you need right and there. And that's when you high five and you go, we manifested that. Bada bing, bada boom. Moving forward. <laughs> All right. Well, that um, if you have more questions about manifesting, please write those. That is something we're passionate about because really one element we didn't talk about and we could bring up on another one and I'll just plant this seed here is you can really manifest so much through your language together and how you speak about it constantly rather than describing past stories together or just talking about what currently is when you're making dinner manifesting and sharing like what's coming and creating that with your language together now jocelyn where is the best place to manifest the best place where creation happens the intimacy space at first just i was gonna say our just throwing it out i was gonna say our beach cruisers at first second best <laughs> a topic for another time but yes the space of intimacy no that's the energy of creation so you really want to manifest just check that out mm -hmm. put that in your awareness and we'll, we'll be back to that but okay. we want to see what comments you have out there we want to get in dialogue and conversation as we move into the third topic which is really about how to balance romance and business when you're in a relationship and so i'll just throw this over to you 
what are some struggles that you have found for us Woo! between us and basically we're together literally all the time and we have a business we have a mission and a purpose we also have our romance and our personal relationship so i guess let me scratch that first question do you see a difference in our personal life and our business life you know i think that's been the switch for us is really not seeing a separation right so we our life is about something. Our life is our mission. So it isn't, it's not even a business like, oh man, that business thing. That business is our purpose. And so for us, it's not like we clock out at five or it's the weekend. We're not supposed to be talking about business. And that's been something funny is we'll, we have in the past sometimes been like, all right, let's go to dinner tonight and let's not talk about empowered couples, right? And then what's funny Which is... It takes a little bit, actually. Well, because also we'll be wanting to talk about it. <laughs> you know, like it'll be like, oh man, I had this idea, but we said we weren't going to talk about that. And that's when it becomes like constricting, right? Is when you, you can't have it just be life. And so I think it's really been for us about that integration, that it is really just all life. And that really bringing more inspiration, but also being clear on our boundaries together. So we do have an agreement, for example, on Sundays that that's our day to connect. We do whatever we want. So we don't schedule anything unless it's in a, like something we've agreed upon and it's an exception. So it's a time for us to just go on beach cruisers. And that is when we intend to not be working or creating that's when we're more refilling our cup we talk at that time a lot about manifesting so the time boundaries being in communication can really be helpful and that's what i'll circle back around with is to really get it's not a, a romance business balance it's integration so mm -hmm. where your business our business and working is not just limited to connecting or going to networking events, meeting new people, sending emails, creating content, recording audio and video, literally riding our bikes is just as much a part of our business yes. as any of those, thi those things. Yes. And as much as intimacy is something that is part of the personal life, that's a part of our work life also. It, it doesn't become these two separate entities because going back to your intention and alignment, it's about your state, it's about your vibration, it's about the future that you're creating and you're living into, and then how, what activities are you being guided to every day that keep that intention and keep that vibration alive because that's how you actually manifest. Mm -hmm. So you have to start looking. If I've been smashing away at the keyboard, hammering away at emails, go outside, go hiking, go circulate new energy, uh, go get something to eat. Just. Pull your partner into the bedroom and and become a in an intimate space. You know all of that that you feel guided to. It's about that space, that energy, that vibration, and that's where you really create from. Because let me just say, I could talk about this for hours. All this stuff physically comes from an energetic vibration. It just does. If I had an hour, I would tell you the quantum physics behind it about string theory. But we all need to wake up to the fact that what we see in our physical existence does not just come from that which is seen. It comes from that which is unseen. And how do we tap into that? Everything we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also just checking in. If there is, if you're starting a business together or you're in business together and there's tension, checking out, is there some need not being met? So, for example... Are you, do you have a craving for travel and you haven't made travel a priority mm -hmm. or making a feeling significance, right? And you haven't been able to feel significance looking at, it might not be actually about the business that you're feeling tension, but something that is a deeper down desire and need that you have that you haven't been making a priority. And I would just check those kind of things out because that's been for us. If I'm not experiencing maybe just some play, right? Like, and it's been really created and I love it, but maybe I just want to go be silly, right? And go to a tea house and dress up. Huh? That's when I can start to feel tension and, and then it could get into our romantic life. But we find romance in our business. So that's where it's really not the separation of romance or business. It's weaving it in to our lives and taking those mini breaks throughout the day and all right. So we invite you to comment as you're watching maybe the recording of the replay. Let us know where you're at in creating a business, 
how to create a business as a couple, what does it actually mean to law of attract or to manifest that business into reality together as a couple, and lastly, as you're doing that, how do you keep romance and how do you keep business alive and integrated to stay in a place of play and have your purpose be something you can also monetize because when you find a way to get paid for what you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's what we're about and getting into these conversations is what we love. We want to hear from you. Any last words for you? Just I love you all and excited to hear what questions mm-hmm. and comments you have. Talk to you soon. Head back out. It's frozen. <laughs>